Hello, my name is Peter, and this is my diary of an independent game designer. Uh, last week, I spoke about uh, Three Deep and all the mistakes I had made um, when I was writing it and presenting it. To show you how I learned those lessons, I want to talk about a game I produced a couple of years later, and that is Devil's Staircase uh, Wild West. You can see it on screen now. Um, first of all, the cover is just so much more professional, and uh, I'm you know, the first to admit that I like to see something I like and then emulate it. If you look at the expanse and Double Staircase, you can see the inspiration. Now, last week I was talking about some of the pitfalls that um, you know, it's easy to fall into as a, um, a independent developer. The first one is making rules light games because they are faster, cheaper, easier to write. Now, I'm going to make no apologies for this because I like rules light games, I play rules light games, therefore I write rules light games. Um, this is the uh, contents. Now, if we look here, you can see uh, character creation starts on page 5, and you're into actually you know, how to run the game by page 17. You've got your skills resolution, everything... Uh, on running the game up to page 27, 10 pages, the entire game system. A little bit on enemies. Uh, now, the running of the DS Wild West starts on 31, that's the game mastery section, and that is over and done with by the end of page 34. Uh, and then the setting starts 35. And it runs up to well, it's nearly 20 pages out of 57. And that was the other thing. Um, so this game is rules light. It was designed to be rules light. It will never be much more complex than it is now. It's a self-contained everything in one. Uh, if I was going to write anything else for this system, it would be a Weird West supplement. Uh, but that's it. A few different rules uh, for magic and uh, the occult. Some more enemies. There won't be that much to it. More of a chapbook um, than a splat book uh, than a uh, full-on supplement. The other thing that I um, talked about as a, a flaw was no setting. Now the setting in uh, DS Wild West wasn't written by me. I paid someone to write it. Um, yeah, I'm English. I know very little about uh, the American uh, Wild West, Old West. So I paid an American to write it. And as we flick through, it covers key events, um, timeline, you know, classic uh, events. You, um, and then we've got the NPCs, which are all statted up, ready to play. Um, and yeah, that ends on 55. So you've actually got a setting. Um, part of the attraction for a Wild West game is the fact that you don't have to work with magic. You don't have to have a whole um, you know, pages and pages of monsters. It's an easy game to, to create because it, it's... You know, the setting is historical, easy to imagine. One of the other things that I mentioned as a difficulty and where I definitely went wrong in 3 Deep was art. Now, if we go back to the beginning, this time you've got myself listed as an artist and three others. But we have the original photography by the Mojave uh, Mule Skinners. Now, they are an Old West enactment, reenactment group. This is their gallery of photos. And this chap here, he's uh, here and... Sorry. 
here he is in the book rather a bit more sketchy looking now I emailed them explained what I was doing this I was making an old west themed game and asked for permission to use some of their photos and showed them examples of how I wanted to process the photos and they were more than happy for me to use them which gave me three galleries full of unique photos um, you won't find these in any other game they're not stock art they're not new in this form they're not out there on the web and I'm just going to flick through a few pages I think they look really really good you, you won't get that as a stock art image yeah that's an action shot um, now because I worked out a set of filters to apply lots of these images are just public domain images but I've applied the same filters to them as I did for the photography and you know, it, it, it looks I think like a, a consistent whole um, the pictures are actually in color is very subtle it shows up more with the um, uh, playing cards there explaining how the game works but the the quality of the, the whole quality of the book is much much higher quality um, when I sent it for you know, layout a uh, print on design I chose the highest quality paper the highest printing so the game looks and feels really really nice now that feeds in to the last thing that I said was a problem uh, for you know, starting out indie developers um, page layout you can see how much I have learnt in the uh, intervening years uh, you know, this doesn't look like a word document that's been you know, printed out this is I think much uh, more nicely laid out um, better use of fonts um, you know, these if you took the corner frames away you would probably think that the um, margins were huge but by having large margins I can put in the uh, page furniture and it looks okay it looks nice so this is really a case of this is how it progresses the uh, I identified problems and I think I've addressed the problems you never stop learning now next week I am going to talk about a third of my games I promise this series is not just going to be me showing off the games I've written um, the next game I'm going to talk about is called Navigator RPG it was released at the beginning of May 2020 literally last week and because this is meant to be a diary um, video channel you will see the process from them you know, I can I'll talk about the playtesting the writing um, show you what the game looks like and then over the weeks you will um, see how the you know, producing a, an indie game works beyond what's on the page so that's it for this week thank you for watching